Now that I've had a taste of being in the media, I want to expand my horizons and make a movie. I love comedies, even the silly slapstick ones. I loved Leslie Nielsen in Police Squad. I once took a girlfriend to see that, and as we came out of the theater, she said, that was the dumbest movie I ever saw. And that was the last date we ever had. I demand certain standards in my love life, which is yet another reason why I am banned for life from being a liberal. High standards drive liberals to conniptions. Anyway, I want to make a funny movie, and I'm thinking how funny it would be to have a bunch of dope-smoking elitist college radicals who coast their way through college in a cocaine stupor, only graduating because they constantly claimed they were discriminated against because of their skin color or gender, and the cowardly universities graduated them just to get rid of them. Now, in the movie, these Beavis and Butthead style losers decide to disguise themselves as respectable people and through dumb luck and stupidity end up running the United States of America. The star of the movie will be you know, probably a skinny little black guy who, when he suddenly finds himself as President of the United States, calls all of his pothead loser friends and says, Hey man, you're never going to guess where I am. Come on, let's party. So this slapstick bunch of do-nothings are suddenly in charge of the USA. But what a pickle that turns out to be because they're totally clueless. The white man hating radical would suddenly be the attorney general. How funny would that be? And of course the courts and sensitive political positions would be filled with dykes and feminists and all the hilarity that would bring. Now, as liberals they despise the military but because they're now disguised as reputable people, they can no longer throw rocks at soldiers and call them baby killers. So they devise hilarious ways to screw with the military, like forcing the United States Marines to take showers with flaming homosexuals. Now, the skinny little president and his pothead gang are always pranking the military, and they're scared to death that the military will catch on and come to get them. Now, since everybody knows that America would never elect a pothead loser to be president, the story would have to be that he somehow managed to seal all of his records, and the media just ignores that. Now, I know that would never happen in real life, but hey, this is a movie. So, the Beavis and Butthead White House gang are always just one step ahead of the long arm of the law. Now, I loved Jackie Gleason in Smokey and the Bandit. So we'll have to have a crotchety old sheriff who smells a rat in the White House and just keeps digging and digging to get to the truth. And for added laughs, the White House losers who have never even run as much as a lemonade stand will use their new government positions to take over big businesses. One of the lines will be, of course I'm qualified to run General Motors. I got a C- in economics. It was a D, but they raised it after I filed yet another discrimination complaint. See? <laughs> I know how to get things done. And of course, we'll have to have a scene where the girly man president is forced to take on the tough guy president of Russia. The scene will have our president crying like Stan Laurel, <laughs> while the Russian president says, I remember when America had men. But you know, the entire movie can't be comedy because if such a ridiculous bunch ever did take over the USA, people would probably die, needlessly. So the movie would have some very sad and sobering scenes of mothers and children crying for their dead loved ones. And of course, the left-wing, west-wing gang would do the only thing they know how to do, lie about it. Now, the only way the movie could have a happy ending would be if the American people caught on to the fakery and brought justice down on their heads. So. We'll have to end the movie with a great car chase, with the Cheech and Chong White House gang trying to flee Washington, D.C. The vice president, who bears a striking resemblance to Boss Hogg, driving the getaway car. That's because he's the only one with a driver's license. So the chase goes on and on with the crotchety old sheriff right behind him, followed by outraged citizens, and of course, the United States Marine Corps. The movie would end with the hapless goofballs in their jail cells saying, Gotta admit, man, that was pretty cool while it lasted. <laughs> ah, movies. Entertaining us with things that could never, ever happen in real life. So, oh, hey, if you like my videos, please help spread the word by clicking that little button up in the corner and donating. 
thank you to those who have already donated, especially those of you who do the recurring donations. This is Wild Bill for America. Thank you for watching, and America bless God again.